Uh, well, hello again and today I thought we'd have a look at the new script sending strip send strip to compositor or edit strip with compositor that's a uh, script that is not quite an add-on hasn't grown up to become an add-on as yet um, but it can be downloaded from the um, blender um, artists.org uh, thread um, which is um, the uh, edit strip with the compositor thread so anyway Let's have a quick look now at video editing. I haven't added anything at the moment. I'll just change these settings for later. Let's try adding a movie. I'll select, let's see, skating with the kids. It's not some shots of a tree in time lapse. Zoom out a little bit here. Some wide shot of the tree. Just edit this down a little bit cut that go up to the close-up which is here somewhere there it is select that K to cut select that K to cut again drag it down here stack it on top of the first shot and get rid of those other ones delete now I have some vertically stacked shots here now Snap those to start at the same time. Snap that. Whoops, the end. So, what I would like to do is see the bottom movie uh, underneath or wiped in on top of the top movie. Now, I can't do that. Uh, easily with any shape wipes or anything like that in the VSC uh, at the moment. But what I need to do first before I use the script is rename these. I'm going to call this bottom strip. I'll rename the top one top strip. We do this so that the uh, script can um, rename the new scene that it will add appropriately. So what it does is throws both these clips into a new blender scene with the compositor turned on. Then it returns that scene strip back into the VSE here and stacks the strip on top. Hopefully on top. Let's have a look. So I've already added the script and started it. Here it is. Pres preserve strip duration. Leave all the other settings turned on. We won't worry about adding the no group. That's a special function we'll worry about later, but we get to do all sorts of different functions with uh, with the script. And you also get to define which node group you want to add, well, that'd be great, uh, as well as the editing screen that you're using and the compositing setup that you're using up here, so that you don't have to do this manual switching. Uh, it n works and it doesn't work, depends. Sometimes it doesn't work that well. Anyway, I'm doing multiple strips. If I was just doing color correction, then I would choose edit single strips. As we're doing multiple strips, let's choose that one. Let's also try in channel increase two. So let's go edit multiple strips with compositor. Click on that now that they're both selected. It sets up a new scene. And because I have selected the bottom strip, strip first and then the top strip, um, it makes this uh, new scene. Uh, did I not rename that one? I didn't either. No, now it's got the long name. Anyway, you notice I increase the channel by two so that it will go one, two on top. Otherwise, you'd have to drag it up there in sync. Now, let's go back to the script and go edit compositor. Let's see. Oh, it hasn't done the automatic preset. but it's added both of those strips with the correct frame counts. You can see the ops offset for the beginning the beginning on both of those as well as the frame counts and the start frames so they should line up with each other. Uh, if I display an output here you can see, I'll turn on the backdrop and, oops, and what am I doing? Zoom that up there we go. So 
you can see the backdrop for both of those. I must turn down the render performance, otherwise we'll be here all day. So let's say I want to put in a wipe, a, uh, a vignette. Everybody likes vignettes. Let's go to matte. We can add a an ellipse mask. Nice, pretty shape. Uh, at the moment, it won't show you anything because it's not added to another image, so it doesn't have any dimension. So let's go to our color mix. Mix that. It's background. Oops. Get rid of that. Put the other image in there. We might swap them around. And then we can use the shape as the factor for the mix. And you can see the circle in the middle for the ellipse mask. So we can change size and scale. Of the ellipse mask now we can't we might want to have a nice fuzzy outline there. So with the shift key I'm going to do a split here. I'm going to select this node, whoops, G, drag it down here, makes it a bit easier to insert another node. And let's put in a filter, let's try a blur filter. Do a fast Gaussian on that. Let's give it say 20 and 20. You can see the the blur occurring there at the uh, edge. I'll give it say 100, 100 for more of a, a a wipe effect. And if we give it a, oops, go the other way, narrow that circle down a bit. You can also add rotation. All sorts of things that you can't do with the VSE uh, wipe effects. And of course you could keyframe these over time as well. So if we go down here to the timeline, you could set a keyframe, a keyframe for the position, and you could move along a little bit further. And it updates and moves. We could move it across here. We could move it up or down and whoops, update. you could leave the keyframe recorder on even but I'll keyframe those, keyframe there. Now the drawback of course is that I can't play it back in real time but I can scrub it and you can see the outline update. Now the, if we go down, scroll down on the properties here we should be able to go uh, get back. I won't explain render composite, you can actually render an offline, uh, an exported version of this imported into your timeline. We're not going to do that today. I'm going to click the get back button and it should take us back to the VSE in the correct scene. Let's do that. And it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't always work. So Jump back there ourselves. We're in the right scene. You'll notice that that's the other scene that I thought I renamed, but apparently I didn't. So that's the uh, the composite screen scene. Anyway, we're in in the video editing mode at the moment. Now, when I click on here, I expect to see an update of our effect, and it's not happening. That's because we're looking at OpenGL Preview, and the render type in the scene preview render is banding box. We need to go down to rendered. Click on that. Hope that it doesn't crash. Ah, oh, there it is. And you can see the close-up is wiped in with the background. If I scrub along here a little bit, being careful not to scrub too quickly because I'll crash again like I did earlier, then we should see that the the wipe updates over time. So that's how the new uh, new effect works. You can use group nodes. You can define group nodes that you would like to use, apparently. Uh, down here, depending on the type of effect that you might be adding. So that's effectively how uh, the new edit strip with compositor 
script works and it's still um, a work in progress and it really is coming up terrific and uh, it's a wonderful new tool. Uh, we have to look into the new uh, color handling processes now that with the um, open color is uh, also have, has been added into the blender for the ability to use different LUTs that brings um, both the VSE and the uh, compositor a little bit closer. I think the VSE is still um, calculating and rendering an 8-bit color uh, so I'm not sure how, quite how that would uh, impact on the output from the compositor coming into it but uh, we'll have to do some tests but anyway I hope you can enjoy this if there's any questions please leave a message at the uh, at the bottom of the um, of the clip thanks very much for your time